Hey, what's up everyone? Thank you so much for coming back to MariahDarshay.com. And today we have Erica De La Cruz. How are you? Uh, blended. Hello world. It's yes, so yes. Thank you so much for coming. I know that once again, you're super, super busy, but I'm glad that you were able to squeeze us in. It was the perfect timing. And how could you resist with the name? So, yes. Yes. and high heels making CEO moves. I'm yes. like, oh, thank you. See, but I can say the same to you guys. Don't you guys love her name, Erica De La Cruz? Like the little, like at the end, and it just works. Okay, so Erica, once again, thank you so much. So I just want to jump right into it. You are a go-getter. You are a boss babe. You are a woman in the business who is just, you're taking over. Yay! And I love it. So what's next for you? What do you got going on? And then we'll kind of um, move into everything else. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I just, my book just came out. So Passionistas, Tips, Tales, and Tweetables from Women Pursuing Their Dreams. Mm -hmm. um, and that was overwhelmingly incredible. I was excited when it was on Amazon only. And then hours later, uh, it hit number one in three categories, bestseller in 29 categories. And then world kind of changed uh, momentarily there. Um, so this year, what's coming up is I have a Boss Babe boot camp. So for all the Boss Babes and Passionistas, um, that's coming up this spring. And then I'm working with a few networks out here. So okay. that's, that's kind of juicy. Yeah, that's some. That's some TV stuff, but I can't really talk too much about that portion. But there's also some awesome brands I'm partnering with this year. Um, so stay tuned. And most of them are pink. Okay. Well, that's, <laughs> you know, so pink's my favorite color. So I'm definitely going to be tuning in, right? It's my favorite so color. It is. See, that's, I knew something was like up between us. Okay. So one thing that I really do adore is the fact that you were able to provide your platform, not only to benefit yourself and your business, but you're also helping other women entrepreneurs pursue their goals. Now let's just jump right in the book since you did mention in the beginning, cool. she <laughs> featured over what? 15 um, 38, women, actually. 38, so to 40 women. Yeah. Yes. 40 mm -hmm. women who have these amazing stories to tell about their businesses. Now, how did you personally go about just selecting these females who have been successful? who are um, also pursuing their dreams mm -hmm. in the industry? Well, so it was a process. It was interesting. I have a partner on the book, um, Kyle Wilson. So he's worked in personal development. He's like a guru in, yes. in that world. And he's put out Chicken Soup for the Entrepreneur's Soul. Oh, I've read that book. Yeah. Oh my, okay, see, I was like, wait, he sounds kind of familiar, but I got that book like years ago. Yeah, That's Kyle cool. Wilson, it, he's an incredible entrepreneur himself. Yes. And he was talking about putting out a book in the girl boss movement and he wanted someone to lead it. And so he came to me mm -hmm. and he said, you know, you would be in charge of getting all these badass boss babes in the industry who want to share their authentic story, not about their businesses per se, but about what it took to get there to help upcoming passionistas. And so from there, he said, you know, you can keep all the branding, but do you have a name? And I said, yeah, I have a name. And I was thinking of passionistas forever. So then, um, then the process became online, um, lots of referral because you get one quality human and they know 10 other quality humans. So there's a screening process as far as, you know, what you've built, what you're up to, your desire to become an author, because essentially every woman in my book is now a decorated bestseller, bestselling co-author. So um, yeah, I got to give that opportunity to them, but in turn be inspired by the stories that they shared. And I think that's the important part is in this blogging world, in this influencer realm, um, to, to a lot of upcoming generations, they're actually being paralyzed and instead of taking action, they're sitting at home because they see so many people doing it. Absolutely. You know, they open their phones, they open their eyes and it looks like a blogger woke up in a golden cloud. Yes. And it's as if everything was already presented to, to them. Yeah. So my goal was to find those influencers mm -hmm. and g give them a platform to share their story about how, hey, this took work. My overnight success took eight years. Yes. So that you know, the next generations can really become inspired and millennials can kind of get rid of the stigma yes, of yes. being lazy. Yes, no, I mean, and honestly, like being a boss babe is nothing easy. A lot of people, as you said, they think that it's just all the glitz and glam. You know, maybe we receive these free products and we're like, oh, like everyone likes stuff for free. However, they don't really look at the hard work, the dedication, the blood, sweat and tears that these influencers have to put in exactly. to take their brand to the next level. Right, and so. the hardships that they go through personally it's yeah. like you know so many so many incredible co-authors in that book they're in the midst of success and then you know for some of them they lost their mothers and that yeah. for a passionista coming up in the world it's can be detrimental yeah. and it's kind of like well where's the me too people are looking out thinking I'm the only one so I feel yeah. like this sort of provides a platform 
for people reading it to be able to say, me too. Yes, yeah. no, I, and I love it. And you know, one thing I also just wanna touch on is the fact that being a woman in the industry is also not the easiest, <laughs> but I do love the fact that this whole women community and we're all sticking together is like the next wave. Totally. So how good does it feel just to be a part of this transition? I know that it's been popular for so long, but I feel yeah. like now it's on a platform where every, the awareness is more broad. Right. You know, so just how exciting is that? Like we've come a long way. Exactly. So it's incredible. Um, I mean, the female demographic in the world has yeah. come so far with the political climate yes. right now. We've seen that specifically in Los Angeles mm -hmm. uh, times 10 as far as women's marches and things going. So not only does it excite me that people are getting together for a cause, but it mm -hmm. also makes me really aware of my personal uh, stance on it all, which is passionistas, although it's a girl boss group, a lot of people approach me to kind of want to man hate or something like that for yeah. lack of a better word and like hey this is an all-female dinner you'll definitely want to go but the the thing that i really want to keep alive is that passionistas is already empowered women helping humanity yes. so i think a lot of the group sometimes can venture into we're at a lack or at a loss or that it's a constant battle or a struggle and while it is living in that just produces more resistance and I feel more more struggle at times. So I just want to make sure that every woman, everyone from, from my sphere and um, yeah, my colleagues, my circle is standing proud in, I'm already empowered, who else can I help? And starting from a place of fulfillment rather than I rather than needing to overcome because yeah. everything you're going to be doing isn't is, it's never going to be enough if you yeah. start. No, absolutely. And if you think about it, it's not. It goes beyond that as well. Like I feel like when it comes down to the the women population, we have to stick together. Mm -hmm. And if you think of just the industry overall, it is primarily a male-dominated industry. Yeah. So the fact that you know, so you creating passionistas and us um, collaborating with other women is so important. So for all you women who are watching, team up with these boss babes and really make stuff happen because yeah. it's possible when you bring it together and you make it work right mm -hmm. there's any men watching this yes partner with a boss babe yes. because it's so incredible i have heard so many amazing tales about partnership mm -hmm. and collaboration where you know a man and a man is fine woman and a woman splendid but <laughs> this there's an interesting um effect that takes place my partner on passionistas is actually well kyle kyle yes, wilson he's, he's yeah. just in support of perpetuating this dance and what yes. he gets back is tenfold because everyone is so equipped with connections and input and insight um, to add. So I would consider also fielding yes. the boss babes. We definitely have yeah. different perspectives, but with those different perspectives, they're beneficial to each other's work. So team it up with male, team it up with females, like just do the dang thing, Humanity. right? Humanity. Yes, let's just like do we're it. All like human beings. Yes. Just, yeah. And we all have so much to offer. So just going into um, transitioning to another topic. So in your in your bio, I love the fact that you say turning your day job into your dream job. And as you guys know, MariahDarshay.com is, we're always talking about women entrepreneurship, lifestyle and empowerment. Totally. So how did you turn your dream job or your day job into your dream job? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes. I love, so that is my, my jam. Uh, turn, it is. <laughs> turn your day job into your dream job. That is something that I've lived by. Mm -hmm. It's served me and something that I encourage everyone to do. Um, because w often when boss babes and upcoming female entrepreneurs are in a day job, they are so discouraged um, that they're not actually going to be able to attain their dreams and fulfill on their goals because they have a time commitment. Yeah. So rather than having that be a reason, start living like a reason that you can't start living unreasonably mm -hmm. and turn your day job in to the dream job, AKA look at the, the resources that you have at your disposal when you're in your day job and start utilizing them for your personal branding or for whatever it is that you're trying to build. And as a story, I was um, at Entercom Broadcasting, uh, youngest marketing director there for about Amazing. three years. Thank yes. you. All while wanting to build this personal brand and empire, if you will. And I may have been a, a subpar employee for the last half a year that I was there. Yeah. 
Um, I was getting everything done, but I also was all of a sudden considering myself. It made the day job amazing to go to. Uh, when I was connected on my lunches, not only was I talking about the broadcasting company, but I was talking about what I wanted to build. And I was able to land a position with Fashion Week hosting so that I could then transition into my solo entrepreneurship yes. um, realm. But all I did was use the brand and company I was already with. So start thinking of your day job, not as a deficit, but as an asset to just literally trampoline you to where you want to go. So make the tweaks, um, make the tweaks to your day job that you can, that you can utilize for what you really want to be doing. Yes. And I love the fact that you really touched on the resources. Some of us may miss a lot of the things that we have or that your company has to offer you when you're in your day job. Really? Yes. And sometimes I find a lot of, I can even speak for myself, we find ourselves caught up in these nine to five jobs and we really start missing out on what our true, you know, meaning is, our true purpose, our fine, our true purpose, exactly. Yeah. You know, so really being able to utilize those resources and connecting with people internally in your company is so important mm -hmm. because you can take that and turn it into your dream job. And the, you know? yeah, the interesting part as well is that the people at your day job, here's the most surprising yeah. part, the women I work with, everything, is that often, they'll support you in yeah. leaving them yes. because they love you. And in some company cultures, you'd be surprised how many actually support you. When I left, I think my, uh, I think my director almost cried because he yeah. said, you know what? I wanted to do that at a point. You go, and now they're my broadcasting family. Yeah. So um, you're not hiding anything. You have, there's nothing behind your curtain. Just let it free fall, drop the curtain, and be transparent and open. And you know, and I do just want to express, because some of you may think like leaving my day job and turning into my dream job is not always easy. So just for someone who has done it and experienced it, what were some of the challenges of that transition that you made? Because clearly, oh, you did the dang thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the scariest time. Yes. It was both the most free free time, um, like free as in freeing. I yes. felt, oh my God. Like, like it was a relief. Exactly. Yeah. Um, combined though with that fear. And the fear was really set in was really set in what's next while I'm hitting it big. And that in between, that's why I'm very much an advocate of staying in the day job, setting up the next um, the next few months. Mm -hmm while you're transitioning to the dream job because the fear and things that I went through was, so what am I gonna do now? So while I was in my day job, I spent that time connecting with other networks, um, late night shows, fashion week, and made that connection and got the yeses and the okays before leaving so that I was set up for success. Um, so it's, it's both planning, clarity really is the remedy to everything because what fear, where fear comes from is this uh, uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So if you gain clarity on the next steps, um, it's gonna help battle the weird, uncertain feelings of if I'm gonna make it, who cares if you're gonna make it? You're definitely gonna make it. Yes. Just <laughs> if you go out and have the clarity and certainty of the things you have lined up in between, you're able to rely on those as grounding, as grounding forces while your head's up in the air with everything else that's coming at you. Yeah, and sometimes that, that anxiety that's built up in your stomach, it's like you never notice that we can always, or sometimes be our biggest enemies, mm -hmm. you know, and, and us stepping out on faith and us really stepping out to truly prove ourselves that we're of our capabilities yes. is something that you should give a try. You never know until you try it. And exactly. it's so cliche, but it's so true, you know? It's so true. It's so true. Interesting you say that. I was just reading something and it was uh, something about, um, it was daily awakenings. And it was talking about how a bird, um, you don't find a bird in a river and you don't find a fish in the sky. And that's because a bird is gonna drown if it hops into the river and a fish is going really to fall and die <laughs> if it's anywhere near the sky. And it was insinuating that human beings are often the only uh, animal in the world who can both drown and go to their day jobs at the same time. So it was really a testament um, to how natural it actually is to pursue your purpose. So yeah. although it's scary, if you don't feel in your purpose at what you're currently doing, search and try and test the waters um, because fulfillment comes from being aligned with your purpose. And so, you know, fish know they're supposed to swim and birds yes. know they're supposed they're to fly. Supposed to fly. Yeah. But even sometimes as human beings, we know we're not supposed to be doing something, but because of societal constructs and what's expected of us, 
you know, 40 years later, you're still going into the same building that you actually loathe and that doesn't fulfill you. And, and you become content, you yes. know, and you become very comfortable. And then, and then you right. get to that point and you're like, dang, I wish I could have done this, mm -hmm. you know? So absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. You're so empowering, I love it. So I wanna talk about your motivational millennial moments. Yeah. So let's touch on that for the viewers who are watching who aren't familiar with, with that topic. Cool, so uh, essentially I am a millennial representative yes. for a bunch of different organizations that traditionally like no millennial or young person, whatever, mm -hmm. is a part of. And that's yeah. my favorite thing is to bring in is to represent our generation and go in to Connected Women of Influence, um, Lessons From Network, Brian Tracy's Success Mastery Academy. I represent the millennial leg for those organizations. Um, and so, uh, motivational millennial moments are essentially my social media feeds. So everything that's posted on there, little snippets of my life and what I've been working on are the moments that I, the moments that essentially aim to inspire other millennials yeah. wanting to go out and kill it um, and do it. And so specifically, you know, on Instagram, they're little snaps of my life. Snapchat, it's just yeah. this thread. Um, videos, I do a lot of video content on my website. Um, Facebook, Twitter, it's all these moments. Um, essentially, if someone's interacting with me and I can't be with them 24 hours a day, if we connect somehow on social media, and I love new media, digital media, I think it's the greatest. It I'll, is, it is. I'll argue that till my death. Um, <laughs> is, you know, I hope that there's a chunk of inspiration in my feeds every single day that's yeah. gonna motivate someone to go the extra mile and to live in their truth. Like, live in their truth. Yes, no, I, I love Yeah, and you know what, we're the new generation. And one thing is that these digital platforms actually connect the newer generation for the ones who are posting. Yeah. It's our new way of communication. Totally. So you turn that into like a way to, you know, transcribe these, these photos and these videos just to get the word across to motivate these other women mm -hmm. or men, um, entrepreneurs, yeah. um, and inspire them through, through your content. Yeah, it's essentially like you have your own tabloid now, yeah, and if yeah. you want to pick it up, mine happens to be motivational millennial moments. Yes, yes. <laughs> Love it. And you know, you guys, I talk a lot about content and the creativity of content a lot on MariahDarshay.com, so you guys definitely need to go to her Instagram. Yay. It's nicely laid, and <laughs> yes, of course, girl. It's nicely laid. It's lifestyle entrepreneurship, empowerment, and all that. So I, I love it. It's very thank clean you. and nice. Likewise. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I try, I try. We're, we're Insta in line. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we definitely touched on your book, but now um, since we did mention that, I want to move into your boot camp. Your boot camp is something that was stimulated, as she said in the beginning, through her book. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and let the viewers know of something cool. maybe you can offer them yeah. and where we can find the boot camp if they're interested in joining. Totally. Uh, so um, I run a program all year long. It's a coaching program, and it's called the Boss Babe Blue blueprint where we talk about um, similarly resources so press media and a lot of mindset eliminating mind traps is my specialty and realizing that pursuing your dreams is actually the truth and that is the majority of what you should be doing um, so that's the program and the boot camp after the book came out um, right so after passionistas came out um, on the tail end of my program, we have a Boss Bay Boot Camp. Mm -hmm. um, it's happening this spring. Yes. So ericadelacruz.com forward slash boot camp, where you can find all the information. Uh, essentially, it's a mastermind. And a lot of millennials have never heard of a mastermind. A mastermind is a very carefully curated group of human beings who come together um, to mind meld and talk about, talk about the depth of the businesses they're working on, the brands they're building, what's stopping them, what's trapping them in their mindset, um, and just revolutionizing it over a weekend. And so that's the wow. boot camp. Um, yes. Super excited. Yes, I'm excited for you. And you guys, this is once again, just amazing information, resources, and tips on just how to transition your business to something you could never imagine it to be. I love that you're yes. providing a platform Thank for people you. to be able to do that. Yeah. No, and likewise, I feel like the more the merrier, and I feel like the more we are, we're able to provide these type of information, uh -huh. you know, we'll be able to motivate the, the, new, the newer generation, the new generation, you know, to come on and jump on board. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay. And if you are looking for another resource, Passionistas is actually active as a resource for several women's organizations and classrooms. So it's available on Amazon. Yes. So. Make sure you guys check it out. We'll have all the links below. And Erica, I just want you to just leave us with just some words, some you know, advice or something that's a little bit you know, motivating. Cool. Um, yeah, so I was on a late night show recently and they asked, you know, you're always so happy. Do you ever get depressed? I'm like, uh. Um, and then they said, you know, how do you deal with 
waking up and having full control, no one telling you what to do, do you ever get fearful that you're not going to do it, that you're not going to fulfill on the goals that you have? And what I refer to that as is something I call so close syndrome. So when you're always so close, and I'll have people come up and say like, oh my God, Erica, you're doing so many things, you're so close. And my immediate response is, oh no, I'm, I'm already there. And they go, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. And, or, oh no, I've already arrived. Because if you wake up as, as oh my God, I'm so close today, mm -hmm. then you're walking around, you're going through your day, introducing yourself as the person who's so close. You're making the connections as the girl who's so, so close. close. The opportunities yeah. you're attracting are the ones that are just so, so close. close. I love that. So as I've already arrived, the opportunities, the connections, yes. and the things that I'm attracting into my life are, are that of someone who's already here. So yes. I would, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And I know that that was a wrap up, but the fact that like you, you can walk in anywhere with the confidence and you wear it on your shoulders and it's so in your face, opportunities will come and you will just take them away. And I, and I love that, you know, because when you refer back to that scenario and that story you just said, and you, you say that you're so close, it's so true because you're speaking it now into existence. When you're so close to something and you verbalize it, then you're just gonna be so close. But if you say, I made it, I'm here, like, and I'm dominating this space, you're, right. that's exactly what it's gonna be. So yeah. thank you so I much for it. coming. I, I really you appreciate so much, you. I'm Yay. so excited to be here. Yes. Thank you.